The topic that we shall be dealing today is about the structure and the function of the immune system. It is very uh, like important for us to know what are the components that are mostly involved in the development of an immunity against different types of pathogenic microorganisms. So in order to understand the immune response towards this uh, microorganism, it is uh, very important for us to know what are the things that are involved, that is what is the structure of the immune system and what are the different components of the immune system or the cells of the immune system that participates to eliminate a pathogenic group of microorganisms to prevent the human from different types of diseases. So let us see what is uh, the structure of an immune system. So before that let us discuss what is lymphoreticular system. Lymphoreticular system is nothing but it is a system comprising of uh, cells and the organs of the immune system. They are distinct uh, group of cells, diverse group of cells that are involved in the uh, production of an immune uh, system or uh, in the immunogenicity and these cells are distributed widely in the different types of uh, the lymphoid organs or uh, the organs uh, which usually develop this lymphocyte to produce an immune response or to mount an immune response against the pathogenic group of microorganisms. So this lymphoreticular uh, system uh, usually consists of uh, two important components. One is the lymphoid cell and the other one is called as a reticular uh, endothelial, uh, uh, excuse me, endothelial component endothelial component. The lymphoid cells uh, are uh, the, lymph, uh, the cells that are usually the one that uh, belongs to the lymphoid uh, uh, cells are the lymphocytes and the plasma cells uh, which are usually the one that belongs to the specific immunity that is nothing but the adaptive immunity or the acquired immunity. Now coming to the reticular endothelial system which uh, usually consists of the phagocytic cells. Uh, as we all know the phagocytes are the cells that are able to ingest the pathogenic group of microorganism and cleave them into different fragments and inactivate the antigen. So phagocytes are the one that belongs to innate immunity or non-specific immune mechanism whereas the lymphocytes and the plasma cells uh, that belongs to lymphoid system are the one that uh, mounts a uh, specific immune response whereas the phagocytes are the one that mounts an innate or uh, non-specific immune system. And uh, here the main important function of the phagocyte uh, is to uh, eliminate the organism by phagocyte cytosis. Apart from uh, being a component of the innate immune system, it also helps to activate the uh, specific immune system by acting as an antigen presenting cell. So the lympho uh, reticular uh, system usually consists of cells and the organs among which uh, we will be studying about the cells uh, that is the lymphoid cells and the reticuloendothelial cells that are mostly used to mount an immune response. And apart from that, uh, whenever there is an antigenic challenge or uh, during an antigenic stimulus, uh, our body uh, or the immune system develops an immune response and this immune response can be classified into two major components one is called as the humoral immune response and the other one is called as the cell mediated immune response. So the humoral response uh, usually involves the antibodies then term humoral comes from the Greek word that is called as body fluid. So these antibodies usually are the one that circulates in the body fluid such as the blood and the plasma and are, mount, uh, are able to mount an immune uh, response towards a pathogenic group of microorganisms. Because these antibodies circulate in the body fluids, they are called as uh, or they are said to mediate humoral immunity. Whereas the cell mediated immunity are usually uh, mounted uh, by a word sensitized lymphocyte, mostly the T lymphocyte. So, the cell mediated immunity is the one that can be mediated by the T lymphocyte whereas the humoral immune response is the one that is usually mediated by the antibodies. Irrespective of whether uh, it is an humoral response or the cell mediated response, uh, both of them usually interact to produce a heightened immune response towards a pathogenic group of organism and both interact equally and uh, like uh, they usually are the one that uh, uh, help to activate each other to develop or mountain immune response. Though they have different properties but they interact to mountain immune response. So that is what is called as humoral immune response and cell mediated immune response. So the lymphoid system consists of lymphoid cells and the lymphoid organs. So first we will be dealing about the lymphoid organ that is the organs of the immune system where uh, the lymphocytes are usually produced, they proliferate and differentiate to become immunocompetent to mountain immune response. So it is a place where the lymphocytes of different 
different types are usually generated. So here the lymphoid organs based upon their role, based upon their functions, they can be widely uh, classified into two distinct types. One is called as the central uh, or the primary lymphoid organs and next one is called as the peripheral or the secondary lymphoid organ. So the main role of the central or the primary immune response is to produce the lymphocytes and uh, they help uh, the lymphocyte to proliferate and differentiate and get mature and then uh, these mature lymphocytes move on to the peripheral lymphoid organs uh, to carry out their uh, immune responses towards the different types of microorganisms. So the generation of lymphocytes usually takes place in the central uh, or the primary lymphoid organs where, uh, uh, whereas in the peripheral or the secondary lymphoid organ they usually carry out their functions. So among the primary lymphoid organs or the central lymphoid organs the examples are bone marrow, thymus and bursa of fabricius. Uh, bursa of fabricius and bone marrow are equivalent. So bursa of fabricius is usually seen in the birds. That was first that was discovered to uh, mount and humoral immune response. So similar type of uh, uh, function was seen in the bone marrow of the human being. So it is uh, the central uh, lymphoid organs which are mainly the thymus, the bone marrow and the bursa of fabricius in the uh, bird. So here the lymphocytes usually proliferate, uh, they develop, they get mature to become immunocompetent uh, to move on to the peripheral lymphoid organ and these uh, lymphocytes that have matured in the primary lymphoid organ uh, move via the blood or the lymph in the lymphatic system to move to the peripheral or the secondary lymphoid organ and here in the secondary lymphoid organ uh, during an antigenic challenge the lymphocyte usually interacts with the antigen and mountain immune response. Uh, examples of the peripheral lymphoid organs are the spleen, lymph nodes and uh, uh, MALD that is mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. So uh, anything associated with the mucus layer, any organ that is associated with the mucus layer usually are under the mucus mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. So we are, there are variety of mucosal associated lymphoid tissue where you can see the lymphocyte mounting an immune response towards the pathogenic group of microorganisms. So broadly classifying lymphoid organs into two major types. One where the lymphocyte usually generate, they get produced, they proliferate, they differentiate, they get mature to become immunocompetent to mount an immune response and this uh, function is usually seen in the peripheral lymphoid organs. Now the first uh, lymphoid organ that we will be studying is about the thymus. Thymus is a flat bilobed organ that is usually present in the upper part of the sternum and uh, the thymocytes or the nave uh, thymic cells usually arises in the third and the fourth pharyngeal uh, pouch and uh, here uh, the yolk sac stem cell where uh, which contains the precursors of uh, thymus uh, or the T lymphocytes usually uh, move on to the fetal liver and then to the bone marrow and ultimately to the thymus where the uh, these uh, T cells usually get mature to form the thymocytes. So they are called as thymic uh, lymphoid cells or the thymocyte. The first organ that is said to be lymphoid in nature. In the human, uh, the uh, the maximum size of the thymus will reach just before the birth and it keeps on increasing at the age of 12 and after puberty there is a successive progressive involution of the thymus. That indicates that uh, the uh, antigenic challenge uh, that is given to the thymus Thymus uh, to mount a heightened immune response takes place only in the early part of the life. And it is after the puberty there is a successive uh, progressive involution where you can see there is a decrease in the cell mediated type of immunity. And this uh, is usually present behind the upper part of the sternum. And then coming to the function uh, of uh, this uh, thymus, it uh, is the one that usually produces the T lymphocyte that usually carry out the uh, cell mediated immunity and it, uh, they are called as the thymic lymphocytes uh, and it is a place where uh, the thymus usually uh, uh, makes the T cell to proliferate and differentiate and add certain markers on the uh, T lymphocyte to go and interact with specific type of antigen. So the antigen that is added is called as the TH y antigen so it is the first antigen that can be seen on the t lymphocyte that can go and interact with the uh, foreign particle and these uh, cells are usually called as t cells because they are usually thymus dependent that is they are generated in the thymus that's why they are called as 
T lymphocytes or the T cells and uh, uh, the immunocompetence uh, that is uh, uh, the thym uh, thymocytes are usually naive that is they are not uh, functional in nature and uh, they get maturity only after the antigenic stimulation. So it is after the antigenic stimulation that uh, the T cells become immunocompetent to mount an immune response. So before it is a prethymic cell that are educated in the thymus to develop the uh, markers against the uh, foreign antigen but not towards the self antigen. So these cells that are able to mount an immune response are called as immunocompetent cells. And the important function of the thymus can be known uh, when there is a thymectomy that is a removal of the thymus and uh, when there is a removal of the thymus you can see a drastic decrease in the cell mediated immunity leading to different types of uh, uh, disorders you can say which are called as lymphopenia or uh, it can be uh, like uh, congenital aplasia that uh, usually uh, says about the decrease in the cell mediated immunity and in humans uh, there is a thymectomy or loss of thymus function leads to digorgia syndrome and in the mice it is called as a nude mice and uh, these uh, thymic cells or the thymus uh, uh, derived T cells are mostly seeded in the secondary lymphoid organ in particular areas. So wherever they are uh, usually deposited it is called as thymus uh, dependent area and where uh, we are, you can see the B lymphocyte uh, in more number it is called as a T independent area. So the T uh, dependent area in the, uh, in the peripheral lymphoid organs are usually the white pulp or you can see them in the central arterioles or the paracortical region of the lymph node. So they are called as thymus dependent area and uh, uh, the thymectomy is the one that where we uh, there is a removal of the thymus to know about the importance of the thymus uh, participating in a uh, cell mediated immune response. So there is a decrease in the cell mediated immune response along with the decrease in the cell mediated immune response response you can also see that uh, the other lymphocyte also being uh, like uh, influenced uh, due to the decrease in the cell mediated immune response because there is an interaction of different cells and it is the T lymphocytes that usually secrete certain types of lymphokines that activates the other lymphocytes too. So once there is a decrease in the cell mediated immunity then uh, definitely it uh, usually affects the other lymphocytes too. And uh, during the selection process in the thymus only one person of the thymus uh, or the thymocytes or the T cells usually come out successfully whereas the other T cells are usually eliminated by a process which is called as wasteful process. So these T cells that are usually eliminated are the ones that uh, may have certain antigen that reacts with the cell anti self antigen or they may have certain types of antigen that uh, may bring about a cross reaction or they may have a uh, antigen that is uh, not of any useful purpose. So these uh, T lymphocyte have to be eliminated otherwise uh, the deposition of these these cells can cause a damage to the human body. So these are usually eliminated by a selective process and it is called as a wasteful process and only one person of the T lymphocytes or the T cells usually come out successfully that are able to mount an immune response. And uh, it was uh, Gill uh, who proposed us uh, the concept that uh, the thymus plays a vital role in the development of cell mediated immunity. So thymus is a primary organ that uh, helps to develop the lymphocytes uh, that helps in proliferation differentiation to make it immunocompetent to um, uh, like uh, give a heightened immune response against the pathogenic group of organism and the cells that are developing from the thymus are called as the T lymphocytes. Now coming to next important uh, central uh, or the primary uh, lymphoid organ is the bursa of Fabricius. So it was first discovered in the birds and it is a lymphoepithelial organ that uh, arises as a pouch on the dorsal part of the cloaca and uh, here in this uh, case uh, of uh, bursa of fabricius because it was first found in the birds to give a humoral immune response uh, the cells that are usually developed from this bursa of fabricius are said to be B lymphocyte so similar type of uh, function is seen in the humans in the bone marrow and hence the lymphocyte that arises uh, from the bone marrow are called as a B lymphocyte and the different between the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocyte is the development and maturation of these lymphocytes in a specific organ. That is, in case of uh, T lymphocyte, because they develop and mature in the thymus, they are called as T lymphocyte. And in case of uh, B lymphocyte, because they develop in a bush of Fabricius in uh, birds and bone marrow in the human being, they are called as the B lymphocyte. Now, coming to the generation, how these uh, uh, B lymphocytes usually arise. So, it is a stem cell uh, that is a precursor 
cancer of the B lymphocyte uh, moves onto the yolk sac in the early gestation and uh, then move to the fetal liver and into the bone marrow and ultimately reaching uh, reaching the bursa where the B lymphocytes uh, usually proliferate, differentiate and become immunocompetent uh, to finally form the B lymphocyte which expresses a marker which is called as immunoglobulin. Now this uh, depending upon the type of antigenic challenge uh, that type of B cells will be produced to produce a plasma cell and these plasma cells are the one that produces the antibodies which goes and interacts with the antigen. So this cells which are able to mount an immune response are called as immunocompetent B cells. So before that they are called as naive cells but once they interact with the antigen and produce specific type of antibodies they are called as immunocompetent B cells. Now uh, these uh, Bursa Fabricius uh, derived B lymphocyte are also seeded in a particular areas in the peripheral lymphoid organ where they mount an immune response. So they are selectively seeded uh, in the thymus independent area mostly in the mantle you can see in the germinal follicles and in the peri uh, follicular region where uh, uh, the B lymphocytes are rich and highly dense in nature. So this is called as B dependent area and also called as thymus independent area. Now the B lymphocyte uh, once it interacts with the antigen it uh, differentiates into plasma cell which is the effector cells of the humoral immune response and these plasma cells are the one that produces the antibodies and the function uh, of uh, the bursa uh, is to carry out the humoral immunity because antibodies are mostly seen in the body fluids uh, the function is said to be carried out uh, of a response which is called as a humoral response and the immunity is called as the humoral immunity. Similar type of function is seen in the human body uh, carrying out in the bone marrow and hence uh, the lymphocyte derived in the bone marrow matured uh, that is the produced and matured in the bone marrow are called as the B lymphocytes. So here the B lymphocytes are generated in the bone marrow and uh, it is in the Peyer's patch that develops uh, uh, the um, that you can see the antibodies developing in the Peyer's patch later seen in the secondary lymphoid organ that is in the spleen and the uh, lymph node where they usually interact with the antigen to mount an immune response. So in human fetus first uh, the lymphocyte develops in the Peyer's patch and then move on to the peripheral lymphoid organs to mount an immune response. So the basic uh, central uh, or the primary lymphoid organs that develops the lymphocytes are the thymus and uh, the bursa fabricius in the birds and it is the bone marrow in the human being. So both uh, uh, of these uh, uh, lymphoid organs uh, that is the primary lymphoid organs helps in the development of lymphocytes. Now these are the areas where uh, the lymphocytes are generated they are mature to become immunocompetent. When they have become immunocompetent they move uh, to the peripheral lymphoid organ via the blood and the body fluids to reach there to mount an immune response towards the antigen. Challenge. So the function of the secondary uh, lymphoid organs is uh, to present the lymphocyte with the antigen. So wherever the antigen is entering into the body, it is the secondary lymphoid organ where the antigen is captured and it provides a ground where the lymphocytes can interact with the antigen uh, to eliminate the antigen or to bring about the immune response. So here uh, we have the secondary lymphoid organs. So here uh, the secondary lymphoid organs can also be uh, uh, like, uh, uh, like classified as as, uh, most organized and scattered ones. So the organized ones are usually the Bayer's patch and uh, we have uh, the uh, scattered one is mostly the uh, uh, mucosal associated lymphatic tissue. So among the organized we can also study about the spleen and the lymph nodes. So here the lymphatic, uh, the major uh, uh, secondary organ that mounts an immune response towards the antigen and provides a ground for the interaction of uh, antigen with the lymphocytes are the lymph nodes. So lymph nodes are nothing but the uh, nodes that us are usually formed at the junction of the lymphatic vessels. And whenever the antigen enters into the body, the antigen is captured in the lymphatic vessels and brought to the lymph node where the interaction can take place between the lymphocytes that have that are now immunocompetent to mount an immune response. So the structure of the lymph node is that it uh, has uh, lobes, two lobes which are usually encapsulated with the fibrous capsule uh, to interior to which develops a cell septa and this septa divides the lymph nodes into two major components the outer cortex and the inner medulla and uh, here the outer cortex usually uh, consists of a majority of the small lymphocyte which are still 
proliferating and differentiating whereas the inner medulla usually consists of the mature lymphocytes uh, so here in the uh, medullary cords and the follicles uh, in the that is in the outer cortex uh, the in the uh, follicles the primary follicle usually consists of the b lymphocyte now this uh, primary follicle has the ability to develop into secondary follicle along with the germinal center it is the germinal center where the clonal selection of the cells usually takes place that is the cells which are able to mount an immune response are only allowed to come out whereas the others are usually destroyed so in the follicular region that is the primary follicle and in the medulla you can see uh, they are rich in b lymphocyte that's why they are called as b dependent area so between these two areas there is a paracortical region which is uh, rich in t dependent uh, uh, lymphocytes or the t lymphocytes so this area is called as a t dependent area so whenever there is uh, an antigenic challenge the antigens are usually brought to the lymph nodes in uh, different parts of the body and these lymph nodes are widely distributed throughout the whole body and uh, they help to mount an immune response in different parts of the body that is you can say they are the one that uh, mounts a systemic immune response towards a particular antigen so wherever the antigen enters they are brought to the nodes and it is a place uh, which helps in interaction with the uh, antibodies to eliminate the antigen and mount an immune response now next coming to the another important uh, uh, second Uh, lymphoid organ is the spleen spleen is the one uh, which is the largest lymphoid organ and uh, it is the one that usually clears the organism which are uh, the blood borne antigen so whenever the antigen enters the blood the blood is directly taken to the spleen and uh, the spleen is the one that usually filters the antigen from the blood so it is uh, able to remove the blood borne antigen similarly lymph uh, uh, lymphatic uh, system or the lymph nodes are the one that filters the antigen from the lymph so here in case of uh, spleen uh, they are the one that eliminates the antigen from the blood so blood borne antigens are eliminated and uh, the uh, spleen is again a uh, most uh, organized uh, secondary lymphoid organ consisting of uh, the capsule the and uh, here you have two major components uh, that are divided as red pulp and the white pulp uh, and uh, the capsule usually uh, interior to the capsule uh, there is a projection of tubercula which uh, divides the spleen into two major component one is called as a red pulp and the other one is called as a white pulp the name red pulp is usually given because it is a place where the dead uh, rbcs are eliminated and it is a graveyard for rbcs whereas the uh, white pulp is the one which contains uh, the uh, splenic artery having a peri arterial lymphoid sheath and it is the lymphoid sheath which contains the primary follicle and the germinal center and also the b dependent area now whenever the antigen enters they are directly Uh, uh, through the blood they are directly taken to the spleen and it is in the peri arterial lymphoid sheath where you can see the interaction of the lymphocytes with the antigen and uh, it is a graveyard for the blood cells and it is the one that usually brings about uh, the systemic uh, filter it acts as a systemic filter to remove the blood borne pathogen and uh, between the red pulp uh, and the white pulp there is a marginal zone which is usually highly uh, dependent uh, on the t lymphocyte so here we have t lymphocyte along with the interdigitating dendritic cell that presents the antigen to the t cell to mount an immune response so spleen is next organized uh, uh, like secondary lymphoid organ to eliminate the antigen uh, from the Uh, blood borne antigens uh, next is uh, the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue and here again the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue can be uh, somewhat organized one the other one can be a little bit scattered one so somewhat organized one is the bayer's patch and uh, the mucosa is a layer that usually uh, covers the respiratory tract or the, the gastrointestinal tract the genito urinary tract so it is more prone to the different types of antigen so there is an antigenic challenge uh, that is at heightened state Uh, you can say in, in the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue so here uh, we have a specialized uh, mucosal associated lymphoid tissue which are the bayer's patch and the uh, 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 mucosal associated lymphoid tissue such as in the livers you have lymph node you have tonsils etc so these are the region which uh, interacts mostly with the antigen and produces immune response towards that particular antigen apart from that you also have gut associated lymphoid tissue uh, mostly consisting of the adenoids and the tonsils is 
and uh, the follicles of the co colon and then uh, we uh, in this particular region we have uh, a combination of cells which are both lymphocyte as well as the phagocytic cells and uh, in uh, case of this B lymphocytes uh, that uh, usually produces the antibodies the most prominent uh, antibodies uh, that are seen in the mucosal associated lymphoid tissue are the IgA antibodies which are secretory in nature and these are the only ones that are able to uh, cross the mucus layer to provide uh, immunity against different types of antigens. So IgA is a prominent antibody that can be seen in mucosal associated lymphoid tissue and uh, uh, like uh, when an antigenic challenge takes place in this mucosal associated lymphoid tissue because it is a connected lymphoid tissue the antibody produced at one area also induces the production of antibodies at the other area. So it gives us a superiority of oral or nasal immunization. So when an oral or nasal immunization is usually given it is uh, seen to it that the whole body responds towards that particular antigen and mounts a generalized immune response in the human body. Uh, so mostly in case of vaccinations, uh, you can see there is a oral and nasal immunization towards a particular antigen and the whole body develops uh, immunization against a particular antigen. So, so this is uh, are all about the organs of the immune system. So in the organs of the immune system, we have studied about the central and the peripheral lymphoid organs. The central comprising of uh, bone marrow, thymus and the bursa of fabricius whereas the secondary lymphoid organs it is uh, mostly the lymph nodes, spleen and mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. Apart from that you can also see cutaneous associated lymphoid tissue that is uh, related to the dermis that is the skin. So whenever there is an antigenic challenge on the skin uh, the cutaneous associated lymphoid tissue is the one that captures the antigen and brings it to the node to mount an immune response. So all these are nothing but the organs of the immune system that helps in the generation of the lymphocyte, maturation of the lymphocyte to mount an immune response by making them immunocompetent. Immunocompetent are the cells which are ready to mount an immune response towards that particular antigen. So without this uh, particular organs there is no development of lymphocyte and there is no immune response or immunity in a person. So next we will be studying about the next important component of the immune system that are nothing but the cells of the immune system. So as already discussed uh, the cells are distinct and diverse in nature that carries out different function uh, in the immune system and uh, they are widely divided as uh, lymphoid cells and reticuloendothelial cells. Lymphoid cells are the one that comprises of lymphocytes and the plasma cell that mounts a specific immune response whereas the reticular endothelial cells are nothing but the phagocytic cells that belongs to non-specific immune system that helps to uh, eliminate the antigen by a process called as phagocytosis and apart from acting as a non-specific immune component it also helps to activate the specific immune response. So the, this is a system we can say that straddles between both innate as well as acquired immunity. So coming to the cells of the immune system the most prominent cells are the lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are small and uh, they are round in nature of about 20 to 25 percent of the total uh, lymphos, uh, lymphatic uh, uh, system in the lymphatic that is in the lymphs you can see them about 20 to 25 percent and uh, they are about 10 to 12 uh, types of uh, lymphocytes that can be seen in the lymph and uh, uh, they are usually uh, divided based upon their uh, sizes as small lymphocyte and large lymphocyte and the major function of the lymphocyte is to mount an immune response towards the antigen. So lymphocyte uh, are of various type having different markers to go and interact with a specific antigen. So before going on in detail about how they interact let us see the characteristics of these lymphocytes. So based upon the size you can classify them as small lymphocyte and large lymphocyte. Small lymphocyte about 10 to 12 micrometers whereas the large lymphocyte about 15 to 20 micrometers and uh, uh, these small uh, lymphocytes are usually spherical uh, nucleus and uh, they show slow motility and uh, they have uh, the least complex structure when compared to the large lymphocytes. Uh, so large lymphocytes are the one that can participate in immune response whereas the small lymphocytes are the one uh, that are least in the com uh, like uh, structural complexity when compared to that of the large lymphocyte and depending upon uh, their age, how long do they survive in the immune system, they can be classified as short-lived uh, lymphocyte and long-lived lymphocyte. Short-lived usually survives only for few days whereas long-lived can be present in the body for months together and also 
till the person lives and that is till he dies these uh, lymphocytes can be present in the human body so short lived lymphocytes are mostly nothing but the effect are cells that usually are present wherever there is an antigenic challenge once the antigenic challenge subsides the small lymphocytes are eliminated whereas the long lymphocytes are the one uh, that is uh, mostly the you can say the memory uh, immunological memory cells that can uh, keep circulating in the body to provide us protection against the subsequent infection so mostly the long lived lymphocytes are the t cells and uh, coming to the lymphopiosis lymphopiosis is nothing but the generation of the lymphocyte as already seen in the structure uh, of the immune system that is the lymphoid organs these lymphocyte generates in the lymphoid organs uh, as a uh, yolk sac stem cell and they move to fetal liver and then to the uh, bone marrow and uh, to the thymus if they are t derived or uh, they move to the uh, bone marrow only uh, to be b derived that is the b lymphocyte or the t lymphocyte. So the lymphopiosis is the generation of the lymphocyte and uh, after generation they are made immunocompetent to mount an immune response. So these lymphocytes keeps on circulating in the body fluid such as blood and the lymph and they act as a policeman which are on a beat patrol to keep circulating in the body for about certain period of time to uh, see or check whether there is any type of infection in the body and whenever there is an antigenic challenge these uh, lymphocytes usually goes to that particular area and uh, they mount an immune response towards that particular antigen and these lymphocytes uh, usually rotate or circulate in the body in a phenomena which is called as lymphocyte recirculation lymphocyte recirculation means uh, that there are different types of lymphocyte carrying out different types of function but they do not move uh, separately or distinctly they mix together in a population or as a mixed population and keeps on circulating in the body fluid such as blood and the lymph uh, to check or to ensure that uh, if there is any antigenic challenge they move to that particular area and uh, interact with the specific antigen depending upon the type of lymphocyte so here we have uh, the immune response that is usually mounted against the antigen uh, and uh, it is a lymphocyte recirculation uh, that uh, ensure that there is an immune response wherever there is an antigenic challenge and this recirculation takes place only of about uh, one or two days and uh, it is the t cells or the b cells that usually bring about the recirculation or the lymphocyte recirculation. Apart from that, uh, these uh, cells uh, express certain markers on their surfaces that is the lymphocyte expressing certain markers on the surfaces to become immunocompetent that is they are able to mount an immune response at a specific antigen and it is a hallmark of adaptive immune system that uh, towards a specific antigen only that type of uh, lymphocyte can go and interact so it is a surface markers that are usually present on the lymphocyte that helps to recognize the antigen and interact the antigen in a specific manner so these lymphocytes uh, can be broadly classified into two types that is one is called as a nave lymphocyte and the other one is called as a mature lymphocytes so before uh, the lymphocyte interacts with the antigen it is called as a nave lymphocyte that is it is not immunocompetent in nature that is, uh, though it does not go and interact with the antigen it uh, has certain properties that is uh, they recognize they helps in recognizing the antigen they brings about immunological memory and helps in mounting an immune response so once these lymphocytes that is a nave lymphocyte interacts with the antigen they, be, uh, they become mature lymphocytes and these mature lymphocytes can be discriminated or distinguished from the nave lymphocyte by the uh, expression of the markers on their surfaces so these are called as the surface markers and based on these markers you can recognize the antigen and uh, the antigenic specificity of that particular lymphocyte with that particular antigen so when the uh, when there is an interaction between the immunocompetent cell and the specific antigen it can either lead to tolerance or it can lead to an immune response so tolerance usually comes when uh, the antigen is in very small amount and also when the antigen is a self antigen because the lymphocyte have been educated in the primary lymphoid organ to not to produce uh, the activity against the self antigens that is what is called as immunological tolerance tolerance can be what about either when there is a low amount of antigen or when the antigen is a self antigen now 
towards the non self antigen uh, when the immunocompetent cell interacts with the uh, specific antigen the immune response is developed only towards a non self antigen the immune response uh, as i told you can be either a cell mediated response or a, a humoral response so here in the cell mediated response it is usually brought about by the t cells and in the humoral response it is brought about by the b cells so when there is a b cell uh, immunity or the humoral immunity uh, the effector cells that are produced from the b cells are called as the plasma cells and these plasma cell produces the specific type of antibody that goes and interacts with the antigen now coming to the t cells when the antigen interacts with the t cells again it helps in the production of the effector cells and the effector cells of the t uh, cells are of two types it can be a t h cell or a t c cell and uh, the t h cell is the one that is uh, uh, the uh, like the important uh, cell in the immune response that produces the lymphokine or the cytokine helps in the generation of the other lymphocytes so based upon the nature of the immune response that is developed the immune response can be classified as t response or the b response and it takes place only when there is an interaction between an immunocompetent cell and a specific antigen now the surface markers uh, helps us to know the stage of differentiation and the functional property of that particular cell so based upon this you can uh, classify the cells as t cells and the b cell first is the classification based upon where they usually originate whether they are in the thymus or the bone marrow and the differentiation how do you distinguish these cell from one another is by the surface markers that are present on the t cells and the b cell so the surface markers uh, that are expressed are usually uh, were given different names initially but later on a specific uh, nomenclature system was given uh, to name uh, these markers as cd cells that is cluster of differentiation cells so these cluster of differentiation uh, cells are nothing but uh, they are usually uh, identified as marker by using monoclonal antibody so cluster of monoclonal antibody when it goes and interacts with a specific antigen you give give that particular term that is called as cd cluster of differentiation so there are about 150 cd uh, cluster of differentiation that can be seen on different types of lymphocyte so based upon this cd you can classify the b cell markers and the t cell marker so let us see the Difference between the T cell uh, markers and the B cell markers. So how this is how you distinguish between the T cells and the B cells. So, so T cells usually have uh, the uh, the CD2 uh, receptor uh, that is usually goes and binds with the uh, sheep erythrocyte. Whereas this CD2 receptor are are absent in the B cell. Whereas B cell recognizes sheep erythrocyte when they are coated with the antibody, and uh, the receptor that uh, recognizes this coated antibody is a CR2 receptor. Which is absent in the T cell, and uh, the T cell expresses a specific receptor which is called as T uh, cell receptor (TCR). Whereas in the case of B cell uh, receptor, it is the immunoglobulin that can be seen. Mostly, it is the IgM or the IgD that is expressed in the early part of the life. So, Ig is on the surface. Immunoglobulin receptors are nothing but they are receptors which are present on the surface and absent in the T cell. Whereas T cell contains a T cell receptor which is called as a T. cr and a specific antigen can be seen on the t cell which is called as thai antigen whereas this type of antigen is absent in the b cell and uh, the blast transformation can take place in the t cell by using metogen such as concavalin a etc whereas the blast transformation of the b cell takes place by, with the help of bacterial endotoxins and next is uh, the t cells are free of any cytoplasmic projections and the b cell usually have filamentous surface and microvilli that helps them to distinguish from the b cells and the t cells now uh, next coming to how these uh, t cells usually mature and this uh, express uh, surface markers on their surface to interact with the antigen so here uh, the t cell maturation usually takes place as already discussed stem cell uh, usually uh, the prominent uh, earliest t cells that are produced are cd7 plus cell which moves to the thymus and develops a cd2 receptor now this becomes a pro t cell now from the T cell, uh, they move on to the cytoplasm to form the pre T cell, expressing 
TCR that is a uh, uh, T uh, cell uh, T cell receptors. Now these T cell receptors can uh, dis uh, discriminate into two different types. One is uh, having uh, it is a heterodimer. You can say having alpha, beta, or uh, gamma and delta chain. So depending upon the chain, uh, the T cells can be classified. So mostly seen uh, T cells are the one which have a combination of alpha, beta rather than gamma and delta. Now the, this uh, T C R having alpha, beta again uh, differentiate into two different types one is called as a TH and the TC cell whereas the TC uh, delta are the one uh, that are mostly used in immunosurveillance and uh, much important functional property is known, uh, known about the TCR delta and gamma whereas TCR alpha beta are mostly studied one and uh, they can be classified as a TH cell or the TC cell. So TCR is a heterodimer and it has CD3 antigen marker and uh, made up of two uh, glycoproteins alpha beta and uh, gamma delta and uh, the TCR has a four region of uh, uh, variable diverse joining and uh, the constant domains and uh, VDJC is the one that uh, rearranges themselves to produce a specific type of uh, T cell that interacts with the diverse group of antigens. So rearrangement of these chains helps in uh, uh, developing receptor against a specific type of antigen. So because they contain VDJC chain they are called as immunoglobulin gene super family or they belong to immunoglobulin gene super family and the reassortment is very essential to identify different types of antigen on a specific organism. So they are diverse group of antigen. So in order to identify that you have got different types of T cells and these T cells have rearrangement in the VDJC uh, uh, chain to produce the marker to interact with a specific antigen. So again uh, depending upon whether it is a self antigen or a non self antigen there is a development of uh, self tolerance uh, and uh, most of the uh, T cells that interacts with the self antigens are eliminated but still uh, these forbidden clones are being produced and they are usually suppressed by some immunosuppressive cells. So it is uh, uh, like uh, when there is a breakdown in this regulation uh, of like uh, producing the self uh, lymphocyte against self antigen there is leading to the autoimmune diseases. So there is a regulation or a check that takes here to see that uh, self antigen uh, lymphocytes are not produced to interact with the self antigen and uh, the most important uh, concept of uh, the elimination of the self antigen is in the thymus or the process is called as the elimination or the uh, wasteful procedure. Uh, now based upon the MHC restriction that is uh, uh, there are certain uh, T cells that uh, recognizes uh, MHC molecule on the antigen presenting cell. MHC molecule is nothing but major histocompatible compatibility complex that is present on the antigen presenting cell. So there are certain T cells which are of uh, CD4 plus and CD8 plus. So T cell having CD4 plus cell recognize class 2 MHC molecule and they are called as the TH cell that is they are called as T helper cell or inducer cell. And the TC cell which have CD8 plus receptor uh, can recognize class 1 MSC molecule on antigen presenting cell and uh, they are called as TC cell. Now the difference between the B cell and the T cell is that B cell can recognize the antigen directly whereas the T cell cannot recognize the antigen directly. It requires the help of an antigen presenting cell that expresses a similar type of uh, uh, the component uh, that is acting as self antigen on the MSC molecule. So the T lymphocyte site recognizes antigen when it is presented only with the MHC molecule. So MHC molecule is again class 1 and class 2 and uh, the uh, topic about the MHC will be dealing in later. But uh, remember that T cell interacts with the antigen only when it is in combination with either class 1 or class 2, uh, class 2 MHC molecule. So T cell having CD4 receptor uh, can recognize antigen when they are presented along with class 2 MHC molecule and T cell with the CD8 receptor recognizes antigen when they are with a class 1 MSC molecule. So based upon that they are called as T helper cell or inducer cell and T cytotoxic cell. So the main function of the T helper cell or the inducer cell is to induce an immune response or uh, to activate the other cells of the immune uh, system uh, by producing certain types of uh, lymphokines or the cytokines. So the cytokines that are produced are of uh, different types and uh, these uh, cytokines helps in the activation of macro 
macrophages helps in the activation of B cells. Uh, along with that, they also helps in the activation of the uh, T C cell that is the cytotoxic T cells. Based upon the cytokines that are produced by the T H cell or the inducer T cells, uh, you can classify the T H cells into T H one and T H two. The T H one uh, cell produces uh, the cytokines such as interferon gamma interleukin two that activates the macrophages. Apart from that, they also helps to produce the cytokines that uh, helps in the intracellular killing of the tubercle bacteria or the lepra bacilli. So next uh, TH2, the cytokines produced by the TH2 are interleukin 4, 5 and 6. They are the one that helps in the development of the other immune cell that is uh, they help in activating the proliferating B lymphocyte and the other cells of the immune system. Now next coming to the uh, other type of uh, the T cells or the sub, uh, uh, T cells they are called as the suppressor T cells. So they are the one that carries the CD8 marker on the surface uh, recognizes class 1 MHC molecule and the, sub, the function of the suppressor T cell is to suppress the immune response or to regulate the immune response and to check uh, the immune response. If there is a loss in the regulation of the immune response it can lead to severe damage to the human immune system along uh, with the autoimmune diseases. So the main purpose of the T suppressor cell is to check the immune system or regulate the immune system. Next are the cytotoxic T cells uh, which are called as the TC cells and uh, they are the one that uh, are uh, usually uh, carrying uh, CD8 markers and again class 1 uh, restriction that is they recognize as antigen when they are presented only with the MHC class 1 molecules and uh, it is this cytotoxic T cells uh, that are cytotoxic towards the tumor cells and are the one that are involved in the allograft rejection that is allograft rejection is nothing but the tissue or organ that is uh, transplanted from one person to the other person. So when there is a rejection, it is because of this uh, cytotoxic T cell. So involved in the allograft uh, rejection and apart from that, they are the one that uh, eliminates the virus uh, infected cells in the body. So mostly targeting the tumor cells or the malignant cells in our body and the virus infected cells. So apart from these subsets of uh, T cell, we also have uh, memory cells. So whenever there is an immune response, uh, the immune response is uh, by producing two important cells. One are the effector cell that immediately interacts with the antigen, eliminates the antigen and the other subset of uh, population are the memory cells that keep circulating in the body to face the antigenic challenge upon the subsequent infection. So these uh, memory cells are of both uh, CD4 and CD8 types and they keep circulating to protect the body against the subsequent infections. Now next coming to the B cell uh, maturations, uh, the B lymphocyte, the stem cell uh, reaches the fetal liver in the early gestation and later they uh, get transferred to the bone marrow where they usually develop to produce the B lymphocyte and uh, uh, the pre B lymphocyte produces IgM in the cytoplasm and later part of the life it is expressed on the surface as an uh, marker on the B cell that is IgM inside uh, initially it is present in the cytoplasm later on it is expressed on the B cell as a marker so the first marker that is expressed on the B lymphocyte is the IgM later on there is a isotype uh, switching where apart from IgM you can also see the IgG type uh, or IgG immunoglobulin on the uh, uh, the B cell. So it is uh, due to the rearrangement in the different chain. Uh, you can see the B cell producing different types of uh, immunoglobulin markers against a specific antigen. So once uh, the specificity is uh, like uh, between the antigen and antibody is perfect, then the B cell uh, uh, like produces the plasma cell to produce the uh, antibody of that specific type towards that specific antigen. So uh, apart from isotypic uh, switching you also have allylic exclusion where uh, as we have seen in the antibody molecule there are two chains the heavy chain and the light chain and the light chain comprises only of either kappa particle or the lambda particle. So due to this allylic exclusion uh, there is uh, either a kappa chain or the lambda chain that will be present on the immunoglobulin molecule or the antibody molecule. So again here whenever there are uh, self antibodies that are uh, produced to a self antigen there is elimination of these uh, uh, self reacting antibodies uh, by a process which is called as a clonal selection or energy and whereas uh, the B cell that interacts with the antigen uh, or a specific antigen or a pathogenic antigen will survive and uh, reacts with the antigen to produce the humoral response by producing the plasma cells and these plasma cells are the one that produces the antibodies the plasma cells are uh, more complex in nature uh, 
they are more uh, developed one they are double the size of the uh, the normal uh, small lymphocytes and uh, they have more uh, structural and chemical complexity they have well developed endoplasmic reticulum quasi complex they have a very distinct nuclei uh, which uh, is uh, present in the uh, plasma cell so the plasma cell can be discriminated with the nerve cell by the most structural complexity and it is the plasma cell that uh, produces the antibodies or the specific antibodies towards the specific antigen the lifespan of the plasma cell is very short so it is only during the antigenic stimulus where you can see the production of the plasma cell once the antigenic stimulus is over uh, once the immune response has taken place the plasma cell disintegrate or degenerate whereas the memory cells keeps on circulating in the body upon subsequent infections so there is another lineage of a b cell that expresses a specific marker which is called as a t cell markers they are the one that are involved in producing the auto antibody and one of this uh, B cell which is called as a B1 cell that expresses CD5 on its surface is the one that is involved in autoimmune diseases. So B cell maturation it is the one that uh, synthesizes the B cell expresses immunoglobulin on its surface and uh, produces a humoral response by producing the plasma cell which produces the antibodies of specific type towards a specific antigen. Uh, next coming to the another important uh, group of lymphocytes uh, which are called as the null cells. So they are about 5 to 10 percent uh, of these null cells in the uh, lymph uh, that uh, keeps on circulating and uh, they are the one that belongs to non-specific immune response and they are completely different from the B cells and T cells. They are produced by a different lineage and uh, they do not express uh, or they carry out a specific immune response or a uh, humoral or an uh, cell mediated immune response but they have their own distinct property and function that is usually carried out in the human immune system. So, nerve cells are also more stra are uh, the one which have a complex structural complexity, well developed uh, uh, components uh, inside its cell along with the azerophilic granules. And these uh, are also called as the natural killer cells and they uh, are the one that targets against a variety of tumor cell and the virus infected cells in the body. So, based upon their function, the nerve cells can be classified as the natural natural killer cells or antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxic cells or they can also be called as lymphokine activated uh, killer cells. So they all of them are, have the similar function and uh, it is a natural killer cell that is mostly called as the null cell. So target uh, cells of these natural killer cells are uh, usually the malignant cells or the tumor cells that are developed inside the body and uh, the virus infected cells. So these natural killer cell eliminates these uh, malignant uh, cells and the uh, virus infected cells and they are said to be natural uh, and they do not require any antigenic stimulus so they are non-immune in nature belonging to the innate immune uh, system and uh, they are the one that are mostly uh, involved in the severe combined immunodeficiency disease which are called as the SCID's disease because they do not require any antigenic challenge and uh, they express two type of markers on their surface which are called as CD16 and CD56 so these are called as glycoprotein receptors and uh, they have a cytolytic uh, factor which is called as perforin. So similar to that of the complement system, uh, C9 complement system which forms a hole on the surface. So these uh, perforin usually forms a hole on the surface and uh, the tumor necrosis factor enters into the cell and uh, the tumor necrosis factor brings about the lysis of the tumor cell or the virus infected cell by a process which is called as apoptosis. Apoptosis is nothing but programmed cell death. So it is the death of the tumor cell or the virus infected cell which is in a programmed manner so without involving any other cells uh, in that vicinity. So it is by apoptosis that natural killer cell usually eliminate the tumor cell or the virus infected cell and it is the perforins that are present in the azerophilic granules that uh, for, uh, causes the pores on the cell and tumor necrosis factors brings about the lysis. So usually these uh, natural killer cells uh, are said to be the one acting against the virus infected cell because they are activated by the interferons. Interferons are nothing but the natural uh, substances that are produced by the human body in response towards the viral infection. So whenever there is a production of the interferon indicates there is a viral infection. So immediately the natural killer cell gets activated to remove the virus infected cells and apart from that uh, they are also involved in the immune surveillance uh, to eliminate the virus infected cells or the tumor cells. 
Next uh, group of the natural killer cells are the antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxic cells. So these are nothing but uh, these cells have receptor on the surface which are complementary to the FC portion of the antibody. So when there is an antigen antibody complex, the receptor that is FC uh, portion of uh, the antibody molecule uh, like it goes and interacts with the ADCC molecule and helps in uh, like uh, enhancing the phagocytosis. So that is called as antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxic. So antibody is required for the uh, cytotoxic uh, of the uh, antigen to take place. So it is called as the antibody dependent cell mediated cytotoxicity. Apart from that the null cells are also called as lymphokine activating uh, killer cells. Uh, they produce uh, interleukin 2 and this interleukin 2 helps in identifying the tumor cell and eliminating the tumor cell only without affecting any other uh, cells in the vicinity. Now these uh, lymphokine activating killer cells are mostly used to treat uh, different types of uh, tumors inside the body and uh, next we have phagocytic cells the most uh, important group of uh, cells that belongs to both innate as well as specific immune response so phagocytic cells are nothing but mononuclear macrophages that keep circulating in the body in the blood as monocytes and uh, when they reach the specific uh, tissues they usually forms histiocytes so mono uh, macrophages can be either in the blood as monocytes or they can uh, place themselves in a uh, specific tissues in different parts of the body as macrophages so they are called as blood macrophages uh, monocytes uh, usually are of about 12 to 15 micrometers and uh, the tissue macrophages are larger when compared to the blood macrophages and they are about 15 to 20 micrometers and uh, they can, are usually uh, produced by the bone marrow monocytes and uh, they, when they generate in the bone marrow uh, as monocytes they circulate uh, in the body fluids for about 6 days now once uh, they keep on moving they have a half life of only about 3 to 4 days so before uh, three to four days they go to a specific tissue in the body and they establish themselves in that particular tissue take for example the alveolar macrophages that usually resides in the lungs to protect against the tubercle bacteria and apart from that uh, the macrophages that are present in the kidney are called as the kufar cells so depending upon the different places where they establish themselves they carry out different function they are given that particular name so monocytes are the one that uh, circulates in the body in the blood whereas the histiocytes or the tissue specific macrophages are the one that have already established in a particular tissue and carrying out certain functions and these are the, uh, like uh, monocytes of the macrophages usually express certain types of markers on them so these markers are called as uh, IA proteins uh, the FC proteins uh, or the FC receptors that uh, have a specificity towards the FC portion of the antibody and they also have receptor for certain uh, complement products and also receptors for certain types of lymphokines and the main function of the phagocytic cell is to carry out the phagocytosis. So phagocytosis is nothing but the engulfment of the microorganism and uh, degrading the microorganism into variable lengths of uh, fragments. So uh, the initial step uh, of uh, engulfing the microorganism is to reach the microorganism in that area wherever there is an antigenic stimulus. So this is brought about by a procedure which is called as the chemotaxis. The phagocytic cell move towards the uh, uh, organism by a process which is called as a chemotaxis once it interacts with the antigen it extends its pseudopodia to enclose the organism in a membrane or a vesicle which is called as a phagosome now interior to this uh, uh, phagocytic cell the phagosome fuses with another important vesicle which is called as a lysosome now the fusion between the phagosome and lysosome produces a larger vesicle which is called as phagolysosome now the lysosome contains lytic components that lyses the bacteria or any organism into fragments and this these fragments are eliminated from the phagocytic cell which are by a process which is called as exocytosis. Now during this exocytosis, uh, these phagocytic cells usually act as antigen presenting cell where uh, there are certain markers on the phagocytic cell which are called as MHC molecule. Either it can be a class 1 MHC molecule or a class 2 MHC molecule. So depending upon the expression of antigen on the phagocytic cell, it can either activate a TH cell or a TC cell. So the main purpose of the phagocytic cell is to uh, the organism, degrade the organism into variable fragments and eliminate the organism making it inactive in nature. 
So uh, be because of the markers, they are able to activate other cells of the immune system, and uh, the induction execution of the immune response is usually brought about uh, by the macrophages, and uh, it is the one that helps to process and present the antigen as uh, with the help of class one, class two MHC molecule, and uh, the MHC genes uh, which are present on the phagocytic cells are similar to the MHC, uh, the uh, receptors or the TCR receptor that are expressed on the T cell. So when Whenever there is a compatibility only then it is able to present uh, the antigen to the T cell whether it is a TH cell or a TC cell and uh, there is a difference between uh, the inactivated macrophages and the activated macrophages. The inactivated macrophages are the ones that are usually normal in nature whenever there is no immunogenic uh, reaction or whenever there is no antigenic challenge they are usually in a normal form whereas when there is an antigenic challenge by different types of organism uh, the uh, normal uh, macrophages gets activated to uh, form the activated macrophages which are more potent in nature to phagocytize the organism uh, more potently and eliminate the organism so they are different uh, like uh, there is a change from the normal macrophages to the uh, activated macrophage there is an increase in the size there is increase in the production of phagocytic enzymes there is increase in production of di uh, different types of uh, leukins uh, that helps to activate the other cells of the immune response and apart uh, from this activation uh, by the activated uh, macrophages to eliminate the antigen uh, when the antibody is involved to activate the macrophage the macrophage becomes armed and this uh, armed macrophages are mostly in uh, act as um, opsonin to enhance the phagocytosis or to bring about the phagocytosis of the particular group of organisms so these are uh, macrophages and uh, the other groups uh, related to these macrophages are called as microphages. So the microphages are nothing but polymorphonuclear leukocyte PMLs. So uh, the examples of these PMLs are the neutrophils, the eosinophils, and the basophils. Neutrophils again uh, they are actively phagocytic in nature and uh, mostly involved in acute inflammatory response and uh, they are non-specific in nature. They can interact with any type of organism, not towards a specific group of organism. Next coming to eosinophilic uh, uh, cells are eosinophils, uh, mostly involved in allergic reactions and uh, in inflammatory response and they have two types of granules that uh, releases the content to bring about the uh, pathogenic effect on the microorganism. Mostly these eosinophilic granules uh, or uh, eosinophils are uh, produced during parasitic infection as well as during an allergic response and the amount of uh, these eosinophils that are present is less when compared to that of the neutrophils. It is the neutrophils uh, that are usually produced in response towards different types of infection and there is a constant increase in the number of the neutrophils which is called as neutrophilia indicates there is certain infection in the body and uh, because it is non-specific we will not know the uh, which type of infection it is but uh, later on with the help of different uh, diagnostic procedure we can identify the pathogenic group of organisms so just to know whether there is any infection or not you can see the number of uh, increased neutrophils in the body and last one is the basophils uh, are the one uh, that uh, are involved in hypersensitivity reactions and um, uh, Usually these basophil contains uh, granules containing um, pharmacological active agents. So these basophil have specificity towards the mast uh, cells when they go and interact with the mast cell. They causes the degranulation of the mast cell to release uh, pharmacological active agents such as heparin, anaphylactic uh, uh, agents that produces anaphylactic or atopic allergy in atopic individuals. So next coming to the last type of uh, cells uh, that are the dendritic cells. So the dendritic cells are similar to that of the macrophages uh, but they are non-phagocytic in nature. They act as antigen presenting cell that process the antigen and presents it to the T cells uh, that is either the TH cell or the TC cell but they are non-phagocytic in nature. And uh, mostly they express class 2 MHC molecule that means they activate the TH cells of the T inducer cells and they are pleomorphic in nature uh, and these usually have a germinal center where you can see the el elimination of the, the lymphocyte 
side which are of not uh, important to the human body. So germinal center uh, usually brings about the clonal selection and uh, helps to select only the type of uh, lymphocyte that uh, are interacting with the antigen and they are the one that present antigen to the T cells and uh, the B cells uh, sometimes can also act as antigen presenting cell mostly during the secondary immune response. Apart from that you also have uh, these uh, dendritic cells which are called as Langer hand cells that are uh, related to the dermis or the skin. So whenever there is an infection uh, from the skin it is a Langer hand cell that carries the antigen to the lymph nodes which can mount an immune response towards this uh, uh, antigen that are entering via the dermis. So these are the dendritic cells. The next uh, thing that we will be dealing in about uh, the structure and the cells of the immune system is the major histocompatibility complex. And the main function of the immune uh, response is to eliminate the, the first is to recognize the antigen and eliminate the antigen. So now when coming uh, to the tissue graft or uh, transplantation of the tissue or the organ from one individual to the other individual, there is an allograft rejection. There is a rejection of the tissue or organ takes place. So this rejection is called as the allograft rejection which was first uh, studied uh, in uh, inbred mice by the Gorer who found that there was a rejection of the tissue or the organ when it was uh, transplanted from one strain to the other strain of a similar species that is the same species so this uh, like when he studied that in detail he found that there are two blood group antigen the blood group one antigen that is uh, common in all the strains and the other group antigen that is present in only few strains of a particular species and this is this uh, second antigen that is usually involved in allograft rejection and mounting an immune response towards the tissue or the organ that is being transplanted when this uh, was further uh, studies were carried out uh, by Dossett he found that uh, the leukocyte contains this human uh, leukocyte antigen that is mostly responsible for the tissue graft rejection and ultimately Benasarev uh, was the one who said that it is a gene that is the genetic basis for uh, 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 towards the response of a uh, particular pathogen or the tissue or the organ is usually brought about by a gene which is called as immune response gene IR gene. So for their contribution uh, to the field of uh, uh, like giving us a concept of major compatibility complex the three were awarded a noble degree so now we come to know that uh, between uh, the similar uh, strains in a particular species there is a rejection of uh, the tissue or the organ that is being transplanted so it is mostly because of the uh, human leukocyte antigen there or receptor that is usually expressed on the uh, the human leukocyte so this are uh, the one that mounts an immune response to the tissue or the organ that is being transplanted so now the when the genetic basis was studied it was found that these human leukocyte antigens are usually present on a chromosome pair and uh, they have three important uh, regions which is uh, coding for three important types of uh, uh, genes uh, producing different types of products so class 1 uh, gene class 2 gene and the class 3 gene so class 1 proteins are the one that are mostly involved in the acceptance or the rejection of the allograft class 2 are the one that is involved in the immune response like this type of response has to be developed it is usually present on that particular chromosome of class 2 and then we have class 3 that is mostly activating the complement system and the tumor necrosis factor the heat shock proteins etc so here the major histocompatibility complex the name histocompatibility complex is usually given because it was studied in the transplantation process so it is the H2 antigen that was initially discovered later on it was human leukocyte antigen in the human body and the major histocompatibility complex is nothing but cluster of uh, compatible genes that are closely related they are multi allelic genes uh, that is uh, that usually determines uh, whether uh, uh, which type of protein has to be synthesized in a particular immune response so the HLA complex uh, is usually present in a short arm of chromosome 6 and uh, these HLA molecules are of three types class 1 class 2 and class 3 so class 1 MHC molecule that are usually expressed on the antigen presenting cell are of HLA molecule class 1 so these class 1 molecules are uh, two type of glycoprotein molecules made up of alpha and beta which are co non-covalently that is alpha that is heavy peptide chain non-covalently linked to the beta micro, uh, micro to uh, beta to microglobulin so there is a non-covalent interaction or non covalent linkage between alpha and the beta so the heavy peptide is made up of three globides alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 along with the 
see transmembrane protein which usually traverses the cell membrane and uh, there is a group that is formed by folding of alpha 1 and alpha 2 and bit, uh, and in this uh, group uh, it is a place where the antigen is usually presented to the T cell whether it is a cytotoxic test or the uh, usually the T helper cell. So class 1 molecule as already discussed they are the one that presents the antigen to the TC cell that is cytotoxic T cell and it is the cytotoxic T cell that is mostly involved in the allo graphs rejections. Now coming to the HLA molecule 2, it is uh, made up of heterodimer having alpha and beta, alpha 1, uh, beta 1, alpha 2, beta 2. The proximal uh, region is usually constant in uh, amino acid whereas the distal one is uh, the one which is a highly variable amino acid and uh, again it forms a group where uh, the antigen is uh, presented to the TH cell and the TH cell is the one that induces an immune response and act as a helper or the individual tells to produce the immune response towards different types of pathogenic group of organism. Class 3 has already discussed, they are the one that uh, are heterogeneous in nature, producing different types of product to activate a complement system, heat shock proteins and tumor necrosis factors. So all of them involved in the immune system to uh, mount a heightened immune response to eliminate the pathogenic group of organism. So for uh, the tissue graft rejection or, and uh, uh, the uh, about the major histocompatibility complex, it is mostly the, the class 1 molecules that are involved in the allografts rejection and MHC molecule is nothing but major histocompatibility complex that uh, determines uh, which type of immune response has to be uh, uh, mounted towards different types of uh, the pathogenic group of microorganisms. And uh, recently uh, these uh, uh, HLA typing is mostly used to identify the paternity test uh, or to know uh, whether uh, transplantation can be done between compatible people or not and it is the one that helps us to to know in which individual the transplantation will be successful. Apart from that, it is also used in anthropological studies, etc. So before it was blood group, uh, blood antigen or the blood grouping that was mostly used to identify the different uh, things. But now it is the major histocompatibility antigen or the MHC antigen or it is a HLA antigen typing that is mostly used to identify based upon the genetic basis. So this is all about the cells of the immune system and the major histocompatibility forming.